In today's episode of the story of animals, we'll explore the fascinating world of animal physiology. Specifically, we're going to dive into the differences between warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals. These terms may sound simple, but they describe very different survival strategies with profound impacts on how animals live, hunt, and adapt to their environments. So, what exactly does it mean to be warm-blooded or cold-blooded? Let's start with warm-blooded animals. Scientifically known as endotherms, these creatures have the unique ability to regulate their internal body temperature. This means they can keep their body temperature relatively constant, no matter what the temperature is in their environment. Whether it's a chilly winter day or a hot summer afternoon, warm-blooded animals like mammals and birds maintain a steady body temperature that is usually higher than the surrounding air or water. This ability comes at a cost, though. To stay warm, these animals must produce a lot of internal energy, often by eating larger amounts of food. The process involves burning calories through metabolism to create heat, which helps to keep their body temperature stable. This internal heating process requires an efficient circulatory system, a high rate of metabolism and the ability to sweat or shiver to release or generate heat. Mammals such as lions, tigers and humans are classic examples of warm-blooded animals. Birds like eagles and sparrows also fall into this category. These animals are incredibly adaptable to various climates. For example, penguins, despite living in freezing temperatures, have special insulating layers of fat and feathers that help them keep warm, while desert-dwelling birds can maintain their body temperature by regulating their internal processes. On the other side, we have cold-blooded animals or ectotherms. These creatures cannot generate their own body heat and instead rely on the temperature of their environment to regulate their body temperature. Cold-blooded animals include reptiles, amphibians, fish, and most invertebrates. Because cold-blooded animals are at the mercy of external temperatures, they can be found basking in the sun to warm up or hiding in the shade to cool down. When the weather is cold, their metabolic rate slows down, meaning they need less food to survive. However, when it's hot, they become more active and need to consume more energy. The most famous examples of cold-blooded animals are reptiles like snakes, lizards, and crocodiles. Fish such as trout and sharks also fall under this category. Amphibians like frogs and salamanders rely on the warmth of their environment to survive. These animals have developed many strategies to cope with changing temperatures, such as hibernation or migration. So, what are the pros and cons of each strategy? For warm-blooded animals, the main advantage is their ability to stay active in a wide range of temperatures. They don't need to worry about fluctuating weather, which allows them to live in nearly every part of the world, from icy tundras to scorching deserts. However, maintaining a constant body temperature requires a lot of energy, meaning they need to consume more food than cold-blooded animals to stay alive. Cold-blooded animals, on the other hand, have a lower energy requirement. Because they don't have to maintain a constant body temperature, they can survive 
on less food. This makes them incredibly efficient in environments where food is scarce or intermittent. However, the downside is that they are restricted by the climate they live in. When the temperature drops, their body processes slow down, leaving them sluggish and vulnerable. During extreme heat, they might struggle to regulate their body temperature, becoming overheated and inactive. To summarize, the fundamental difference between warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals lies in their ability to regulate their body temperature. Warm-blooded animals maintain a steady internal temperature regardless of the external environment, while cold-blooded animals depend on the temperature of their surroundings to control their body temperature. Each strategy comes with its own advantages and challenges, which are reflected in the behaviors and adaptations of these remarkable creatures. Now, it's time to see how much you've learned from today's episode. We've got three fun trivia questions coming up. Ready? Let's start. Question one. What is the key difference between warm and cold-blooded animals? The correct answer is A. Warm-blooded animals can regulate their body temperature, while cold-blooded animals cannot. Warm-blooded animals have the ability to maintain a constant internal temperature, while cold-blooded animals rely on the external environment to regulate their temperature. Let's move on to the next question. Question 2. What happens to cold-blooded animals when the temperature drops? The correct answer is C. Their metabolism slows down. When the temperature drops, cold-blooded animals' metabolic rate decreases and they become sluggish or inactive. Now, for the last question for this episode. Question 3. Which of the following is an advantage of being warm-blooded? The correct answer is C. Warm-blooded animals can remain active in a wide range of temperatures. Being able to regulate their internal temperature allows warm-blooded animals to remain active and thrive in diverse environments. Great job if you got all three questions correct. If you missed any, don't worry. You've just learned some fascinating facts about how animals adapt to their environments. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution.